This video will present a recent paper from Google AI revisiting self-supervised visual representation learning. So the headline idea of this paper is that the standard architecture designs and uh, convolutional neural network advances that have been working in supervised learning tasks like uh, image net classification don't necessarily translate to these self-supervised tasks such as predicting the rotation, the permutation of jigsaw puzzles, or the exemplar augmentation task. So this is the idea is are the neural network architecture designs overfitted to, sell, uh, to supervised learning tasks such as recognition and detection and should maybe these neural architecture searches be deployed into self-supervised learning or into uh, like a pipeline of self-supervised learning and then taking the representations into the classification models but then using the uh, hyperparameter neural architecture search and all these heuristic tricks to design this uh, jointly on self-supervised tasks for for the downstream representation learning. So self-supervised learning is inspired by NLP success and it's just recently, well, it's been tested since like the dawn of AlexNet, but it is definitely gaining traction. And so in NLP, this is about predicting words from their context. So in the sentence predict words from their context, words and form would be labeled as positive, words and predict one, and then tiger and ocean don't appear in the context. So they'd be labeled as zero or negative. So self-supervised learning has these pretext tasks. And uh, so there's other techniques other than context like NLP. There's uh, more ideas in visual representation learning and images and computer vision. So here are the, some of the common self-supervised uh, visual learning tasks. Rotation prediction, exemplar classes, relative patch location, and jigsaw puzzle permutations. And many of the studies that have already come out on this use the AlexNet CNN architecture. This paper from Google AI is going to use the state-of-the-art ResNet designs, like the wide ResNet and then the reversible ResNet, which is a more efficient implementation. So rotation task is like this. You would take images and then you rotate them either 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, or 270. And then the network is basically doing a four-class classification task for these different rotations. The exemplar is uh, you use data augmentations to uh, take an image and then uh, change it in like a ton of different ways. And then this image corresponds to its own class. So it would be like a massive way, uh, like maybe like a thousand class and on uh, classification problem. So jigsaw puzzle, uh, this is an interesting one. It's where you take like a patch of the image and then you uh, like uh, you crop the image and then you further refine the crops and then scramble it away in this thing and then try to have, you pass each of the crops through the network. So each of these, uh, each of these square tiles goes into a, convolutional network and then it predicts the where it thinks it might lie in the permutation. So I personally don't, I'm not really a huge fan of this task. I don't really see how it makes a whole lot of sense because uh, how does it know the context really? And then uh, relative patch location is the same idea. I like this idea more where you just have two patches and you predict how they might relate to one another. And then another really interesting uh, study that I'm going to be making a video on tomorrow. So please subscribe if you're interested in this video is a multitask self-supervised visual learning where you combine these uh, self-supervised learning tasks together and then see what kind of representations are derived from that. And uh, they test this in, in their paper using the uh, ResNet 101 model. So representations for image classification. What you do is you freeze most of the network and then you take the pre logist layer, like, the, like an intermediate vector representation, and then you input that to a logistic regression model and use that as a classifier trained with SGD and data augmentation. So the vector uh, that they extract, the feature vector from the self-supervised uh, learning task, they vary this from uh, size 2048, 4096, 6144, and 8192. So this is the size of the representation vector extracted from the self-supervised learning task. So another thing they find is uh, you might ask, like, how about instead of a logistic regression, we do a more complex uh, multi-layer perceptron model so this plot just shows, uh, this is the logistic regression, the MLP, and they basically perform the same. So logistic regression is, has sufficient capacity for this. And then another interesting thing is uh, where in the network do you get the features from? So this one thing that's interesting is in the VGG19 network, they uh, take the intermediate features from the third block rather than the very end and get better results. But with the ResNet architectures, they always get... Uh, better results towards taking it uh, as close to the output as you can get. So again, this would mean like, should you take it from like here 
or should you take it from down here, like towards the output, or from the intermediate features? So the data sets that they test are uh, ImageNet, which is 1.3 million images in 1,000 classes, and then the Places 205, which is 2.5 million images in 205 classes. And these are pretty different data sets, and it's used just for a uh, measure of generalization with respect to the data sets. So these are the results, uh, basically, across the RevNet, ResNet, uh, V2, and ResNet, V1, just showing how uh, amazingly different the results can be for the different architectures. So, and not only that, but inconsistent. So even though RevNet kills on rotation, it doesn't perform as well on a relative patch location. So this is the results in the table. Uh, so this uh, refers to increasing the widening factor of a ResNet, so increasing the number of feature maps at each intermediate layer. So a uh, very interesting trend you see is as they continue to increase the capacity of the model, they get better results. So the widening factor is highly correlated with success on this task. And uh, yeah, so as they increase the representation capacity of the model, they get better results. So then also this shows how um, applying their new ResNet with the widening factor, how this compares to the previous papers that have been published on self-supervised learning. So most interestingly, uh, the rotation paper that first came out using an AlexNet style architecture achieves 38.7% ImageNet, but their model achieves like 20% better and is getting much closer to the fully supervised benchmarks. So this is another interesting thing that uh, they present is that the success on the self-supervised task isn't always correlated with uh, image net accuracy, like this point right here has uh, like 95% on uh, rotation, but then only like 20% on the image net accuracy. So then the, another very interesting takeaway from the study is that it seems like larger models, like increasing the width multiplier and the, uh, this is the uh, vector that you take from the representation seems like as you increase the width of the network and then as you get a bigger uh, feature from the model that you do a better job on image net classification with these uh, vectors. So thanks for watching this video revisiting self-supervised learning. Please subscribe to Henry AI Labs for more deep learning videos. Thank you for watching.